Ladies and gentlemen, today is June 1st, 2016, and this is the Can Kill Show, episode 295, where we learn to be better artists. Today, we are going to be learning about the color boomerang. And what the heck is that? Well, let me show you really quickly. It is going to be this, and we're going to be working with color today, and I'm going to be teaching you a very important lesson about something that I like to call boomeranging, and that is basically, to sum it up, um, when you are lighting pictures, you are going to be starting with a desaturated color, then you're going to be going saturated, right? Moving more to the right, and then as you go back to your shadows, look at that, we boomeranged all the way around. We've moved like this. We're going to get into that in just a moment because we got to take a stroll down the love of the lane, of course, because you guys have been submitting your awesome art. So if you guys want to go check this out for yourselves, then just type in that tiny URL slash KNKL fan art. And go check out all the awesome pieces, especially all this Overwatch stuff. I love the influx of Overwatch art that's been coming in. So thank you guys so much for submitting your art. You guys are amazing. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into today's show. All right. And you might be curious about actually what this is. This is actually a caricature, or not a caricature, but a drawing of my character from one of my favorite games in the world, Dark Souls 3. Her name is Coagulara. She is, um, well, actually, she originally comes from, oh, wait, where's the actual layer? Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, she originally comes from my rogue from World of Warcraft, and then I just basically made her over. If you couldn't tell, she's an undead rogue, and uh, basically just transferred her over to the Dark Souls universe. She's now a cinder baby with all the other cinder babies out there. We're going to be talking about that today, So that, except I gave her a big cape today to better demonstrate what we're going to be talking about, because we're going to be coloring, we're going to be masking, we're going to be having a good time with that. But before we get into that, we got a very special thing to do, and that is, of course, you probably want to know how I even got to that point. So let's go ahead and just fire up that time lapse. And in the meantime, you're probably asking yourself, how the heck do I even get to this point? How do I drop bodies like that? And hey, how about that? I've actually made a tutorial, a tutorial on drawing bodies. And if you want to go check that out, then just click on this right there. Take you back a couple weeks where we learned to draw the female as well as male figures. But uh, this one will take you to the female figure. Uh, one, because obviously we're drawing Coag today. So we're having some fun with that. Having some fun. Yeah. Okay, so many of you guys have seen this many times before, how I like to create my sketches, start off really rough, get those flow lines in there. Draw, not drawing stick figures. Don't draw stick figures when you're trying to create your character, but rather think of shapes. You are molding your digital clay. Molding your digital clay, and I'm making sure that my mic is on, because sometimes it is off but it is in fact on today. And then a little bit of flow lines for our cloth that's gonna be coming off there. It's gonna be really handy for demonstrating what we're talking about today. And that is the color boomerang effect and we're having a good time with that. All right, so step one, as you guys are doing this at home, and uh, if you guys wanna get this PSD, don't worry, it'll be available at the end of the show. I'll show you how to get it. Uh, and you can take a look at this for yourself. But if you would like to do this at home for yourself, draw one of your own characters with a big cape coming off the back, I find this is really helpful. It doesn't have to be like a big cloth fabric thing. It just needs to be a big shape. Something that you can easily kind of play around with different colors on. And in this case, I chose a cape. So um, the first thing that we're doing is we're sketching in our character and we're cleaning up our lines, right? We're refining and sculpting our character into the way that we want it to be. Getting it ready to be masked. And that is the first thing that I'm gonna tell you guys about because uh, we're going back to basics, right? Back to basics these next few weeks, and a lot of people have been asking how to uh, just set up lines, color, set up masks, and I'm gonna show you guys a really cool thing, now that that's done, show you a really cool way to mask your character. But it requires some very important things. Some very important requirements must be met before you're ready to do this. And that is, let's go ahead and zoom in here. So if you look at the edges, if you look at the edges of my character, layer here so uh, and actually get the right brush out okay so look at these edges right here you see how there's like a little bit of like artifacts little things that are sticking off these little gray bits ideally you want to get rid of all these little things because here's the problem is I'm sure you have seen this thing where uh, you're about to sneeze and then and then you hit the sneeze button and then you go in and then you're like, oh, okay, well, I know how to do this, right? I've seen your episodes before, Keenan. We'll go ahead and just uh, use our magical wand. We'll select everything around the character. Then we'll go ahead and create a new layer. Invert that mask and fill it, right? Hey, look, I completed the character mask. And actually, that looks all right. That actually looks all right. But, okay, here we go. This will help demonstrate what the problem is. 
So, but if we look closely at this mask and we darken the background, this is the bane of our existence. This is what we don't like. This strange little thing that happens around our lines where it gets lighter again, where our character mask pokes through. We do not like this. We do not like this. In fact, this makes us want to take our tablets and smash it into pieces. We want to break it in half over our heads. I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that, okay? So rather, uh, what you want to do here is make sure as you're using your magical wand, you want to take a look up here at the top and see that your tolerance is right around, I don't know, 60 to 80 is really nice. I find the 80 works really good because it allows you to, uh, it kind of goes past all these little grays here and then it stops right at the kind of the darker lines, okay? So you can select everything around your character, right? And that looks good. Okay, but the way that you're gonna avoid having those things on the outsides is you're gonna go to select, modify, then you're going to expand. And I like to expand it by about three pixels, depending on your resolution, all that stuff. It's gonna make it different, but about three pixels. See how it just like pulls in that selection? Now we're ready to invert it, right? Because we selected everything around the character. And you're gonna invert it by hitting Shift Control I. And it's not gonna really show anything. It doesn't really make a huge difference. It changes slightly, probably by a pixel on your screen. Uh, but then you are ready to do this. Then you can fill it, okay? And look at how much time we save. And because I don't want you guys going in there anymore, I don't want you, no longer. Gone are the days where you are manually masking all this stuff, guys, because you don't need to do that. See, now when we darken it, look, no more nasty outline. Yay, awesome. Okay, so that's lesson one. Now let's go ahead and move into the next thing. Man, I got really into that. <laughs> this is very, very important that you get that. Okay, because this is what I don't want to see any more of. No more of this, guys. Okay, be like, all right, we just finished our sketch. Let's get in there with that good old ink brush. And let's start manual masking everything, right? Gone are the days of this, guys. You don't need to do that anymore. You don't need to do that anymore, <laughs> okay? So there you go. Uh, I just showed you how to mask everything really quickly. Now let's move on to the fun part. Let's move on to the fun part, which is going to be our actual color. Color lesson, okay? So let's go ahead and darken down this background a little bit. Uh, let's go right about there. I just want a nice mid-tone. Let's go ahead and bring all those colors back or bring all those sketches back, okay? Because this is what we're focusing on today. Okay, guys, so the color boomerang. What the heck is a color boomerang? Okay, so here's what I want you to think about. Here's the overall lesson for today. We're going to be thinking about saturations. We're gonna start with saturations and then we're gonna move into something called hue shifting. But first, let's start with just one thing at a time, right? Don't want to confuse you. Don't want to confuse you. Okay, so we're starting with saturation. And I want you to think about it as we go less saturated here. Then we're going to go more saturated here. And then it's a boomerang. Do you know where we're going? Right back to where we started. Back to less saturation. Now let's go ahead and take out our color picker. And let's examine that closely. And then we'll apply it to our character. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this today is because so often I get the question of, uh, Keenan, I just don't know what colors to pick. Or I'm using these colors, but they just feel very like strange. They're all bright and they just are not pleasing to the eye. What makes colors pleasing to the eye? And I'm here to answer that question. The answer is the color boomerang, right? <laughs> Actually, well, that is it, but here's why it works. Because this is the um, this is the type of pattern that is exhibited in a lot of natural colors that you'll see in the real world, and that is wherever light is interacting with an object, it is going to tend to go at the brightest points. It is going to tend to go more towards desaturated, right? It's going to move more towards that white. Okay, so this is our first color. See how it's right in the middle. Then as we're going to move towards the center, right? We're getting darker, right? The light is beginning to fall off. So notice where we go. We've moved from here to the center. Now we've moved this way. We've begun the boomerang, okay? Then as we go towards our shadows, look what happens. We move all the way. See, we were right there, and we move down here. So we have created this awesome arc that goes right about like that. And wouldn't you know it, it's the same shape as a boomerang, or it's the curvature of a boomerang. I know a boomerang technically like goes in a circle, but like, Maybe for this thing, it, it looks like a boomerang. It creates the shape of a boomerang, okay? So it goes there to there, and then we go back down. So do you see what we're getting at here, guys? We're going from desaturated to saturated, and then we go back to desaturated again. And this has to do with areas of light, areas of where the light begins to fall off, and then areas of shadow, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, let's apply it 
So I'm sure you are thoroughly confused now. And, uh, but don't worry, I'm gonna help you out now because we're gonna apply this entire thing to the character. As well as, I'm gonna give you guys a really awesome tip for coloring. Okay, this is gonna translate really well into uh, this thing that I'm gonna teach you about coloring. Okay, is there enough gain on this? Okay, good. Check in my, check in that mic. I'm moving it back and forth now between, I use it on my PlayStation now because I'm like playing a lot of Overwatch lately. And this is like the only mic that I have. The mic that came with the uh, PlayStation I actually chucked as soon as I got it because I thought it was a piece of crap. Turns out it's actually really good. Turns out it's actually really good. It picks up your voice. And uh, if you use uh, your iPhone, if you try to use like an iPhone or I, uh, iPod headset, it makes like this really annoying like buzzing sound. I don't know. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. I'm sure you've been in a game and you've been talking to somebody and you can hear this really weird like buzzing and this strange like white noise sound behind their voice. But anyway, that's another story for another time. Okay, because we're just focusing on this cape, so let's go ahead and manually mask this cape because that is allowed to do. Your original character mask, I don't want you manually masking, but everything on the inside, unfortunately, we haven't figured out a way to do that just yet. But that's okay because all we're worrying about is the cape today. Okay, so let's go ahead and darken this down. Maybe we'll turn her a different color, something a little more pleasing to the eye like that. Yeah, oh, I like that. There we go. Okay, cool. Don't want to get caught up in that. Don't want to get caught up in that. Okay, so the first tip. You might notice that the first thing I did was I created a layer and I clipped it back. See, because here's the layer as I created it. And this is the awesome thing about a character mask is because now that we laid this out, when we create any layer on top of it, we can clip it back by holding Alt and clicking, clicking between the layers. And notice how it just pins everything back. It pins everything back to that original silhouette that was there. This is gonna help you guys save a lot of time and now you don't have to worry about coloring outside of the lines, right? That thing they told you to do in grade school, it's already taken care of, it's taken care of for you in this program called Adobe Photoshop. Hey, that's awesome. Okay, but more importantly, notice the color that I chose to make this mask. What color is that? Well, I started with this dark color. Why would I ever do that? Why would you paint the shadows first? Is it, it's almost like painting the light onto a shadow is gonna be more natural and easy and fun. But why would we want to have fun when we do work? No, 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 no. What we want to do is we want to paint the light first and then paint the shadow and then consider all the transitions that go through that. No, don't do that. Uh, so tip of the day, number one, is when you are beginning to color your characters, paint the shadows first, paint the darker colors, because then what you can do is you can grab the color, right? So say we started with a dark color and think about desaturated. Think about right in this middle area. If in this case, it's going to be a red cape. Okay, so we know that we're going to want to be right in this middle area and make it dark. Okay, that's what we got. Then you can go in there and say, okay, what color, what is the local color of this cape? And that's a fancy way of saying, what is the actual color? Like if I look directly at this cape, it, what color red is it? And, um, and a little note for you guys, try to stay away from being like, oh, it's a red cape. Oh, let's go all the way red because oftentimes this doesn't actually happen. You wanna be very, very selective. You wanna be very selective of when you choose to kind of kick it all the way to the top and to the right, okay? And uh, another word of advice is if you do, if you do ever decide to go all the way to the top and the right, make sure that you only do it with one type of color, one type of color. So say you don't wanna have an all the way bright red and then an all the way bright green in the same uh, picture. It's gonna look off, it's gonna look strange gonna look really weird. So a good way to just kind of balance everything out, just bring it down a notch. Just bring it down to right about there, right? Which is where we are, right about there. Then you're gonna take that local color and you're gonna begin painting it in. And for the light source guys, all I'm doing is I'm thinking, okay, this is just a straight on light source, like a top light source, nothing crazy. Um, but let's just go ahead and start painting that stuff in. And notice very quickly how this is already looking very nice. It's looking very good. And of course, we're keeping in mind our cast shadows, right? We wanna have our nice uh, softly blended shadows, but then also we wanna keep in mind our cast shadows. So say, uh, oh, whoops, um, that was way too hard of a transition. So I like that soft transition there, but say right here, right? Cause the light is, go ahead and create a new layer. Let me demonstrate what the light is doing. So the light is kinda coming down like this, right? and then it's hitting right here, and then it's gonna create a cast shadow right about right there, and that's the line that we're looking for, okay? And I'm really just eyeballing it. The light doesn't have to be perfect, but here we'll create the cast shadow like that. Boom, 
awesome. So you have a really cool contrast of soft transitions, soft transitions right here, and then a hard transition. Let's do the same thing right here. Hard transition right there for the cast shadow, soft transition. Ah, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? But now we're gonna be getting into, back into that color boomerang. Okay, so you'll probably get to about this point. You'll say, okay, yeah, I'm liking the way this looks. But um, I want the cape to look even brighter. Now, how do I do that? Well, I've already gone here, so do I need to go like here now and make it like super bright? Not necessarily. This, is the, this has to do with color temperature, and this is going to get into the next part of today's tutorial. And that has to do with hue shifting. Hue shifting and color temperature. Okay, so as your objects absorb more and more light, they are going to become what we call hotter. The color is going to get hotter. And for red, uh, the way that you make red hotter is you are going to hue shift more towards yellow. You're going to move towards yellow. And this can be seen, if you're curious about how this works, uh, type into Google um, a red um, or a brake light, brake lights from cars. And you'll notice that if you look, in fact, let's just go ahead and pull that up right now. Let's go ahead and pull that up right now. Why not? Okay, car brake light, because this is going to totally seal the deal, baby. Seal the deal. Okay, cool. So take a look here. So look at this, car brake lights. So if you look uh, at the outside, obviously we have all this red bloom and stuff going on, but then notice how the actual hottest part of the light becomes yellow. Isn't that interesting? And that same thing is going to be happening. See, look at this, it's a yellow light, yellow light, right at that hottest point. And that same exact principle we are going to be using with our capes because this has also to do with the color boomerang. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to this. And now that we have that knowledge, now that we have that knowledge, let's explore this uh, color band, this color bar once again. Now what I want you guys to do is I want you to look at this thing right here, this little thing that's gonna move up and down. This is what I like to call the color Richter scale because it's gonna move around as I move back and forth on this bar. Can you see what's happening here? So as I go towards the shadows, see how it moves down towards the purples? And then as I move towards the hotter parts, see it's moving, it's going all the way through and coming up towards the yellows and oranges. See, so this has to do with hue shifting. And this is what I like to call color temperature. So if you want your objects or your materials to appear brighter or like they are absorbing even more light, uh, you want to not only desaturate, as we've learned with the boomerang, but you also want to hue shift towards the hotter color, the hotter colors. And um, yeah, in this case, we've got our good old yellow or like a more of an orangey thing, right? So let's begin throwing that on top of here and see what this does. Watch what this does. Ah, now we have an even hotter thing, an even hotter color. Love it, love it. And then we're just go ahead and blend, or we are blending that, we are blending that in. And then you have something like that. Oh, isn't that awesome? Wow, that is a really good looking cape there. I like it a lot. Now, here is the problem that I know that you guys are gonna run into is that sometimes you'll have something like this color. You'll have like this color, and then you're like, oh, well, I want it to be really bright. So let's go ahead and throw this on there. And then see how this transition from this color to this color is not good? See how it just looks not quite right? Now, the reason why this is happening is because your contrast, there's too much contrast that's happening. And I seriously hope I turn this off. No, I didn't. Okay. I. <laughs> I hate it when I don't turn off my ex external hard drive. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was like a buzzing noise. Hopefully, it's a very low hum, and unless you have like a massive subwoofer, you probably didn't hear it. Everything should be coming across very clearly right now. Uh, but let's get back to this. Okay, so you have, you have this color going to this color. And the reason why this doesn't look good is because there's too much of a jump that's happening. There needs to be an intermediate thing. See, like if you look at our boomerang, we're going from here down to here. And that's too much of a jump. Yes, we are saturating, but we need to get a little bit more of that local color in there. We need more of that local color. So let's go ahead and add some of that. What color is this cape actually? And if we put that color between the two, notice how that begins. See, look at that. It totally 
creates that perfect transition and it looks very pleasing to the eye because we have the hot color where all the light is being absorbed. We have the local color where the light begins to fall off a little bit and then we begin hue shifting and then we have our cast shadow, cast shadow, which is of course back to desaturation. All right. And that is how you make your transitions look good. So keep that in mind. Always ask yourself, okay, we have the hot part here. Is there a local color in the fall off? Is there a local color being shown here? And if not, here's another good example. Look at this. I would say that this part right here, the part where it's kind of blending into this, this area looks a little muddy. And that is when you can say, ah, Keenan Lafferty taught me exactly why that looks muddy and I know how to fix it now. That's because there's not enough local color being shown in that fall off. So let's put that local color back in there. Put that local color back in. And then you'll have something like that. Whoop. And then you'll have something like that. And then see, totally looks much nicer. And this has to do with, I mean, there's a lot of different materials that will react differently, but this is a good general thing to get you guys started with creating uh, fancy transitions. Transitions that look very pleasing. Transitions that make it look like you know what you're doing. And we like, we like that kind of stuff, right? That's why I know y'all showed up. Okay, then you can go ahead and have some fun with that. And yeah, I think that's looking really good. I like that a lot. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're gonna call that good. But before we go, we do have an awesome question coming in. So it's time for question catapult. All right, today's question is coming in from XY Jin, and I love this. I love the simplicity of this question. It is, do you believe in talent, right? And just the arrows pointing up, of course, that's very clever. XY Jin, do you believe in talent? Okay, this is a question I get asked a lot. I get asked this question a lot. And I personally do not like the thought of talent. I do not like the thought of talent. Yes, talent exists, but people, tend to think of it as something that is given to you. Something that you didn't really have to work for or you got like a head start in life, right? You were born into this world and you were given this magical gift from the gods, from the universe, right? It says, you are going to be an amazing artist. Here you go. You don't worry about having to work for 20 years uh, every day, drawing different pictures, failing over and over again, drawing a bunch of pictures that look like crap. Uh, drawing stick figures and, and thinking that that's the way that you actually construct bodies and then learning that that's not the way and figuring all, all this crap for yourself. No, 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 you, you were just handed all that, right? And then all the people that wanted to be an artist be like, oh yeah, I, I thought about being an artist or I have a friend that tried to be an artist, but that's, man, that's a really competitive field. It's really hard. And he eventually had to give it up and he had to go work at Subway for the rest of his life. You know, it's like those types of people, they want to believe in talent and that's and here's why because they want to have that excuse that it just wasn't given to them it just they just didn't end up being lucky enough right when in actuality the uh it doesn't matter how much talent you have it doesn't matter how much skill you start with let's say even talent was a real thing let me actually argue the other point let's say that you actually were given something a magical gift but just like anything else anything else that is given to you right in this life because of evolution or whatever thing you want to call it uh, that which does not contribute, anything that you don't use, you're gonna lose it, right? So even if talent was a real thing, it still doesn't make a good argument because if you don't use it, if you're not working on it every day, your talent is gonna fail you, your skills are gonna fail you. So that is what I think, XY Jen, I hope that helps you out. Don't make excuses, it's not about talent, it's about work. All right, before we go, I wanna say thank you to my amazing sponsors. Thank you, Laura Bashir. Thank you, Cody Turner. Thank you, David Chiariello. And thank you, Ian Crowell, Megan Quinn, Matthias Silva, and Infinite Scribbles. Thank you so much to my amazing sponsors. If you would like to sponsor the show and or get today's PSD. Actually, I think the last sponsorship thing just filled up. Dang it. Maybe I'll open up a couple more this month. But most importantly, if you want to get today's PSD, take a look at this for yourself. Color these things in. Um, go in there with your actual color picker and like actually check out the Richter scale uh, theory for yourself. You can just go ahead and click on this picture right here. It'll take you over to Patreon. You can support the show. Get not only today's PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And you'll have some fun with that. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, take care.